American natural science writer Janie Benyus writes. Biomimicry is innovation inspired by nature. In a society accustomed to dominating or improving nature, this respectful imitation is a radically new approach, a revolution really. Unlike the industrial revolution, the biomimicry revolution introduces an era based not on what we can extract from nature, but also what we can learn from her. Hello, thank you for tuning into Kaleidoscope. In this episode, we are going to talk about biomimetic architecture. Think about the word biomimicry for a second. It literally means imitation of life. Human designs have always taken inspiration from their surroundings, and imitating the form of life is almost intuitive rather than something we need to think about. For example, robots. A humanoid robot can have human appearance, move through kinetic applications, and evolve based on neurophysiological principles. They're one of our best life-emulating endeavors. But they're not the only form of life imitation. Biomimicry can also use natural principles in combination with new technology to bring architectural innovations. During the Renaissance, architect Bruno Leschi was inspired by the form of the egg when he was designing the dome of Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence. By the end of 19th century, Parisian gardener Joseph Monnier was annoyed by large clay pots and copied honeycomb structure to make garden pots lighter. In the early 20th century, during the Art Nouveau movement, artists imitated nature with decorative floral patterns. They were greatly inspired by the publication of Ernest Haeckel in Jena, "Art Forms in Nature, Art Forms in the Ocean." In fact, the 1900 World Exhibition Center in Paris, designed by Rene Binet, is based on Radiolarian skeleton depiction in these books. In the 1950s, American engineer Buckminster Fuller is also one of the most well-known applicants in the field. Who has been preoccupied with mechanisms of biological systems and apply their effects to architecture? Nowadays, we also have pioneers like German architect Frei Otto, who is famous for his use of lightweight structure, in particular tensile and membrane. Biomimetic designs can take four different approaches. First, on the appearance level, the architecture copies the form of an organism. For example, Nicholas Grimshaw's 2001 Eden Project in Cornwall, England, is a series of artificial biomes with domes modeled after pollen grains. Norman Foster's 2003 Gherkin Tower has hexagonal skins inspired by Venus flower basket sponge. And also interestingly enough, the majority of city aerial views have high resemblance to soap bubbles and dragonfly wing patterns, showing coincidental beauty of architectural complexes with network and connection structures found in nature. Second, on a functional level, the architecture interacts with surrounding environment like a living organism. For example, Michael Pier's 1996 Eastgate Center, located in Zimbabwe, is a building project that tries to minimize the cost of temperature regulation. And Pierce looked at African termite mounds for inspiration, and used its principles to make an entire mall ventilate and cool on its own. Doris Kim Sung's architectural research installation, located in Los Angeles, called Bloom, is a self-shading and self-ventilating complex made entirely of shiny metals inspired by human respiratory systems. Third, on ecosystem level, their designs are copy how ecosystems work together on a large urban scale. For example, the Sahara Forest Project, initiated by company Exploration Architecture in Jordan, Tunisia, and Qatar in 2010, is a project that tries to reconstruct regenerative ecosystems to change desert environments. And this required architects to study biology very carefully and implement technological infrastructures at a large scale. Fourth, on a construction level. Here, construction processes of our architecture are delegated to living organisms other than human beings. In Jeff Menos' book *Architecture by Bees and Other Animal Printheads*, he explores a present and future example of biological manufacturing processes. He introduces the idea of 3D printing bees and writes that in the future, bees can print on signs and phone poles. They take over parks and gardens where they print strange forms on flowers. Sealing orchards and roses in masonry shields, bizarre gardens of hardened geometry forms on window sills and ledges, deep in urban forests and along railways and roads. In 
Researchers at MIT's Media Lab have created a dome of, from silk fibers woven by a robot arm, which was then finished by live silkworms. This is a perfect demonstration of biomimicry on a construction level.